If you're like me, you've just gone out and bought the new Sony A7R Mark V, then you're gonna need some of these. The A7R Mark V can take two different types of memory cards. It can take the standard memory cards, which we all know and love, but it can also take the CF Express Type A cards, very similar to the Sony A7 Mark IV and the A7S Mark III. And out of them two different types of memory cards, obviously you're gonna get the better performance out of the CF Express Type A cards, but when 80 gigabytes cost you 200 pounds, and from that 80 gigabytes, you'll only get around about 90 minutes of recording in 4K, and that's in the XAVC-S codec. Memory cards to film a photograph a wedding, do a client shoot, or even a simple week away with family can cost a small fortune and you can lose them really, really easily. But the A7R Mark V doesn't need memory cards equivalent to 24 karat gold to be able to get up and running, be able to take Instagram bangers from them holidays, or just start shooting them daily vlogs. So let's run through the alternative options being the V30, the V60, and V90 cards, and I'll go through all the features that them cards unlock on this camera and you can save yourself a little bit of money. So let's start off with the V30 memory cards. These we've used for many, many years. Uh, these were the first kind of memory cards I ever got. These are the SanDisk Extreme Pros. These are just 32 gigabytes, so you can pick these up for like nine or 10 pounds. Uh, but if you want, and what I'd recommend is getting 128 gigabytes, get them off Amazon for like 35 to 40 pounds each. So for a 128 gigabyte card, you can take around about 933 uncompressed RAW files at 61 megapixels. And on the A7R Mark V, if you're spamming that shutter button and filling the buffer, it'll take around about 55 seconds to clear the buffer onto the memory card for you to start taking photos again. And that's around about 37 uncompressed RAW files. Now, when it comes to shooting video on the Sony A7R Mark V, then you can shoot up to 60 frames a second in 1080p. This can be done in both movie mode and S&Q mode, and you can shoot in XAVC-S codec, which is H.264, or XAVC-HS, which is H.265, which is supposedly a better quality Quality, but you have a much smaller file size at the end of it. But you cannot shoot any of the footage in XAVC SI, which is the intro codec, which is meant to be the much better quality codec out of the three. You can also shoot 4K using the V30 cards up to 60 frames a second, but you can only do that in standard movie mode, and all of the S&Q mode is locked when using V30 cards. Again, you only have the option for XAVC-S or XAVC-HS and not the intro codec XAVC-SI and there's no option for 8K whatsoever on the camera when using V30 cards. Moving on to V60 cards, the cards that I'd recommend are the Prograde V60s. I picked some of these up a few days ago. They cost about 50 to 60 pounds, again, for 128 gigabytes. I get asked a lot what brand I'd recommend using when it comes to V60 and V90 cards, and I always say Prograde. I've got some Lexar cards. I never had a problem with them over the last year, year and a half I've been using them. But a lot of people on the internet say that they've had cards fail when they've been using Lexar, and Prograde's never seem to fail. Touch wood, so far, so good, it's been great. But one thing I've noticed when using the A7R Mark V with with the Lexar cards is when I try and preview the files using the, the little play button on the back, it's sometimes been a little bit slow to, to get them files up. And when I'm scrolling through, it's it's just not as fast as using the Prograde. So I don't know whether it's the card starting to get a little bit old or not, but yeah, with the new Prograde cards, I've not had a problem. Obviously using 120 gigabyte cards, again, the capacity hasn't changed. It's just the speed that has changed. So you'll still be able to take around about 933 uncompressed RAW files on the camera. But the one thing that has changed is the write speed because you're now using V60 cards. And the 55 seconds it took for the V30 card to clear the buffer on the A7R Mark V goes down to around 30, 31 seconds to clear the buffer when using a V60. Now in terms of shooting video when using a V60 card on the Sony A7R Mark V, you now have the ability to shoot up to 60 frames a second in both 1080 and 4K in both the standard movie mode and S&Q mode. You also now have the option to shoot 8K in standard movie mode, 8K is not available whatsoever in S&Q mode on this camera. But again, like the V30 cards, with the V60 card, you can only shoot in XAVC-S and XAVC-HS. You cannot shoot in the all intro codec of XAVC-SI. Now moving on to the final one, which is the V90 cards. These do actually cost a fair bit. You can pick them up on Amazon for normally between 130 to 160 pounds each, and that's for 128 gigabytes once again. There has been times over the last year when these have gone for around about 80 to 90 pounds each for 120 gigabytes. Um, you have to be really, really quick. I've only ever seen them up like that for maybe an hour or two randomly in the day. So I always create an alert. When they go down to that price, that's when I make a few purchases. Again, because we're talking about 120 gigabyte cards, 
the capacity hasn't changed, so we'll still be able to take the same amount of photos, but that buffer will clear even faster than it did with the V60 cards, and that 30, 31 seconds is now down to around about 20 seconds. And when it comes to filming in standard movie mode, you can shoot in 1080, 4K, and even 8K in any of the frame rates in all of the codecs, including the all intro codec. Unfortunately, the only thing which is locked to you when using a V90 card is the all intro codec when shooting in SNQ mode. The only way to shoot in the XAVC SI codec when shooting in SNQ mode is to use the CF Express Type A cards. Obviously, because the CF Express Type A cards can write even faster than the V90 cards, then the buffer will clear even faster when shooting photos. Unfortunately, I don't actually own any of the CF Express Type A cards, so I can't actually show you or even do any tests to say how quick the buffer will clear. But when I have to use any of my cameras, including the A7R Mark V, in any of the professional environments I shoot in, such as weddings, I will only ever be using a V60 card in my A7R Mark V and maybe a V90 card when I really, really need it. Obviously, the V90 card will clear the buffer faster than a V60 card, but you need to decide whether you need to clear that buffer faster or whether you actually will ever fill up that buffer. And right now, when I'm shooting this video, I'm only shooting the XAVC-S, which is just the standard H.264 codec. I rarely ever shoot in the XAVC-HS codec, and I never shoot in the XAVC-SI codec. So a V60 card will do me quite happily, and when I need it, I can always use the V90 cards. But if you want to make your own mind up about the codecs and which one would be best for you, I've recently done a video about the Sony A7S Mark III, where I went through all three codecs and explained what each one means. If you want to see that video, then I'll leave a link right up there. If you want to pick up any of the memory cards that I've mentioned, I'll leave a link down in the description box below. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more content like this, then make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for all your notifications, and I will see you right there. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.